Welcome. Uh, so, uh, as you all know, Santa Monica has been through a number of public processes about the Santa Monica Civic Auditorium. Uh, we came very close to turning the lights up very, very brightly in 2012, but uh, we lost the redevelopment money and that deal went away. So City Council appointed the Civic Working Group from a pool of public applicants to work with you to develop your dream scenarios for the Civic uh, with financial solutions to make them happen. So it's really a, a two-fold process we're working on, which is quite different from what we've done in the city in the past. Uh, we're breaking out of the mold uh, where we stop with the uses and uh, we're going to involve you in a public of the economic feasibility of your ideas so we can make a full set of recommendations for not only what we want, but how we know it can be a reality. Uh, anyone who's done a home repair or a remodel knows how much impact the financial realities can have on your plans and your dreams. And so we really want you to be a part of the whole picture. Uh, the Civic Working Group has spent the past several months identifying the issues that are important to the Civic, and we decided that the best approach would be to organize a series of workshops so that we can share all this information with you and give you complete, as complete information as we can communicate in this kind of format. Uh, we want your choices to be fully informed so that they're the most useful choices they can be so that they have much more of a possibility of sticking and of becoming a reality. Not only what is your dream scenario, but how are we going to pay for it? So today is the first of the three workshops, and we're going to go over what our group has come to call the givens, which has to do with the things on the site that we have to work with. Uh, for example, what does the landmark designation of the Civic Auditorium mean for any kind of use that it might have in the future? And what is adjacent to this site? Where is it and what's around us? And how would various ideas interact with that? Uh, and then we're going to come together and we're going to hear from uh, our consultants who will talk about uh, a lot of the different uses that have come up in our many, many years of public processes and uh, uh, kind of talk with you about ways things can fit together and show you examples so that uh, you can add to or prioritize and make comments on the list of uses that we might have for the Civic. Uh, and then moving forward, after today, our next meeting will be in January, January 31st and February 1st. It will be a double header, and that's where the rubber hits the road. We're going to talk about economic issues, how much it would cost to implement an idea, how much it would cost to operate an idea so that we can maybe adjust our scenarios so they balance a little better from that point of view. And the last workshop will be March 21st, where we're going to uh, work together to come up with more concrete recommendations to deliver to City Council, which is the mandate of the Civic Working Group. Uh, the Civic Working Group meets publicly the fourth Monday of every month at 6.30 p.m. here in this room, where we are now. Uh, as I said before, we spend our time uh, looking over research and information to inform decision making for the Civic Auditorium so we can present that information to you at the workshops. Our next meeting in October will be all about parking. I know that's an exciting topic, so maybe you guys will show up. Uh, you are always welcome to come to all of those meetings. Um, additional information about the Civic Working Group and future workshops can be found at www.santamonicacivic.org and uh, you can tell all your friends who couldn't make it today that they can get the materials from this workshop on that website and submit their comments online so that we get the broadest participation possible. And that will be true of all three workshops that people will be able to participate that way as well. If you're really into social media, you can uh, 
post comments at hashtag future SM civic. Um, so uh, with that, I would like to uh, welcome our consultant. Uh, oh, I'm All right. I thought I did that. Uh, so we will officially convene the meeting of the civic working group. And uh, with that, I will welcome our consultant, Paul Silverin, from me. And uh, we'll get started on the exploration of our amazing site. Good morning, folks, and thanks very much for sharing a little bit of this gorgeous Saturday with us. Um, we hope that this will be an interesting and stimulating morning and that you'll be able to share some uh, useful and exciting perspective about the uh, future opportunities for the Civic Auditorium and the surrounding area with the Civic Working Group who have the awesome responsibility of trying to make informed uh, recommendations to the City Council about how to, how to proceed. Um, our firm, HRNA Advisors, is a consultant uh, to the City and the Civic Working Group to help with this process. We work on urban revitalization projects all over the United States and we're particularly happy uh, and pleased to be involved in, in this particular project because of the opportunity to finally resolve the longstanding problem about how to put the landmark Civic Auditorium back into public use and equally important to be able to look at the opportunity of what to do with the sea of parking that surrounds it. Um, as all of you know, the uh, uh, gorgeous new Tongva Park just opened. Um, the site is close to downtown. It's close to the high school across the street. It's close walking distance to the new metro station that will be opening in about another year. And it's immediately adjacent to the uh, uh, Ocean Park uh, community. And so thinking broadly about the opportunity that the site holds to reconnect all the disparate pieces of the urban fabric in Santa Monica, in addition to saving the Civic Auditorium and putting it to productive public use, uh, is just an amazing opportunity and we're very pleased uh, to be in involved with it. And for John Olshuler, the chairman of our company, and me, it's a personal pleasure uh, because it's the first time that John and I have been able to work together on a project in Santa Monica since the 1980s when John was city manager and I was the planning director. So for us, it's a bit of a homecoming, um, even though I've lived here uh, in, uh, in Santa Monica through all that period. But we're particularly happy to be able to work on this project uh, and assist you and the working group and the city council make uh, good decisions about the future of the, the Civic. Um, I think we're all a bit heartbroken about the condition of the Civic. Uh, many of us remember attending performances there over the years, whether it was concerts in the 60s and 70s, um, or for many of us who are parents with kids in the school system here, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, wonderful events of the, uh, the Stairway of the Stars, uh, which demonstrates the, uh, the vibrant and exciting talent of all the children in the Santa Monica Malibu Unified School District uh, who take advantage of the amazing music program um, and perhaps you've attended other, you know, uh, trade shows or cat shows or whatever the case may be uh, over the years. But the Civic is an, uh, is an amazing resource, uh, well used, well loved, and sadly very vacant and shuttered at the moment. Uh, as Nina said, uh, the, the Civic, uh, the, the city was forced to close the Civic um, uh, in June of last year uh, as a result of the fact that the state dismantled this, uh, the the uh, system of redevelopment, which would have provided a very important source of, uh, of uh, tax revenue to help revitalize the Civic. And so the, the contract that the city entered into with the Nederlander organization who would have programmed and used the Civic and brought it back to public use uh, essentially died on the vine. Sad as that is, this is a tremendous opportunity now to rejuvenate the uh, thinking about what to do with the Civic. The economy, fortunately, is in a much better place than it was when the decision to enter into the contract with Nederlander was made. And I think we have an opportunity to think freshly about the best uses of the Civic. And as I said before, just as important to think about the land around the Civic. The site is about 10 acres or so in size. It has the opportunity, it presents the opportunity to create 
uh, a mixed use arts and cultural district for which the civic itself serves as an anchor use with other things around it that would really enliven the city, uh, knit together the various uh, other amenity areas around it, reconnect us with the park, the pier, the beach, and all the other uh, uh, important landmarks uh, and areas around us. So this is the beginning of a conversation about that. As Nina said, there will be a series of workshops to flesh out the uh, uh, tricky and complicated details. But the purpose of today's workshop is to think broadly and largely unconstrained by costs and design issues and all of the other things that ultimately will have to come into play. So as you can see on the slide uh, on the wall over uh, to my left and your right, uh, this is the sequence of workshops that Nina mentioned. Um, uh, today's workshop, as I said, is about broad ideas. That will be followed by a two-day workshop uh, in the winter and at the end of January. Uh, and then a third workshop in the spring where we will be trying to help the civic working group bring all of its ideas to a head so that they can make good recommendations to the city council, which ultimately has the final say, uh, as in all things in Santa Monica, uh, about what will happen with the civic and, and the surrounding site. Let me just sketch out for you what we'd like to do today. As you can tell from the agenda, if you've had a chance to work at, look at it, today's workshop is in two principal parts. Uh, as soon as I'm done talking, uh, we're going to invite you to walk the site. Uh, there is a walking guide that hopefully all of you picked up uh, when you came in today. And the walking guide uh, will direct you to each of uh, four stations around the corners of the site, which are illustrated on the slide on the wall. <clears throat> each of those uh, sites is marked with a little tent structure that you'll see with a large number on it. And we are, uh, in the walking guide, we pose a series of questions that we would like you to think about as you go to each one, that ask you to think about the relationship between the site and the surroundings, to begin to imagine uh, ideas about how to connect the site to the broader uh, city of Santa Monica community and the uh, other features around it, and for the, uh, the site right here at the Civic, to begin to think about um, what might happen here uh, as well. But the idea for the morning, the first part of the morning, is to begin to get a feel for the site as a whole. After about an hour, we'll ask you to come back inside, and then we're going to focus more specifically on the Civic itself. We're going to talk about four general ideas that have evolved over many years of discussion and studied by city staff and others, and have involved perhaps many of you in other forums like this one, about general ideas for potential reuse of the Civic Auditorium. And then we'll break up into some smaller groups at these tables, and we'll have a more focused discussion about those four uh, general concepts and your ideas about what might happen on the parking lot area around the Civic itself. So that's the basic plan for the day. Um, we'll, uh, and then at the end, this, the working group will have an opportunity to sort of reflect on what they've heard from all of your, di your, your discussions. So for, the, um, for walking the site, uh, we would ask that you divide yourselves up and head in any direction. Uh, don't all go to the first one, um, but split yourselves up and go to any one of these four stations um, and then move on to the next one. Uh, as I said, each one is marked with a little tent structure and a big number. Um, there's one in the corner uh, out here uh, near the parking structure another one in the corner of 4th uh, uh, and Pico, uh, another one on the back side of the Civic Auditorium where uh, it will be interesting for you to see what the back of house situation looks like and how close Main Street and uh, the Ocean Park community are to the site. And then the other one uh, is right out here uh, in front of the Civic Auditorium. So we would ask you to um, split yourselves up. The Civic Working Group members will be at each station, and you might actually want to head out to those stations now. We need to do roll call first. <coughs> we haven't done roll call for our meeting. Well, we could have said that earlier, uh, but. No, but we have to. I know. That's what we were saying before we head out. No? I'm okay. have a list. I have it. I'll do it. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, Member Boza here. Uh, Member Denny is absent. Uh, member Orozco? Here. Uh, member Sum Summers? Here. Member Upton? Here. 
Member Katia Jiri. Here. Um, Member Brock. Here. Member Gruber. Here. Chair Fresco. Okay, all accounted for, thank you. Okay, so civic working group members, if you'd like to head out first, um, the members will be at uh, each of the stations. There will be other city staff and, uh, and others who can help you, um, but we would like to ask you to take your time, visit each station. You have about 10 or 15 minutes at each one, and then we'll come back here. Please remember, as I'm sure you know, but I'll say it anyway, that this is an active working parking lot out here. So please keep your eyes open for moving vehicles. Uh, but be sure to stop at each station, engage in some good conversation, and then we'll see you back here in about an hour. <laughs>
Yes, there, the comment was uh, about the utility lines that bisect the site. There are some very large utility lines uh, that would have to be moved potentially uh, or relocated uh, if anything was to go below grade. Okay, I, I'm sure that there are more comments, but we need to move on um, with uh, the next part of the agenda. So please hold those uh, comments for your individual discussions, which will come next. Okay, so what we want to do now <coughs> is move to the second part of, uh, of today's agenda, which is focused on some discussion about the potential uses for the Civic Auditorium itself primarily, and to a somewhat more limited degree, ideas about what might go on on the parking lot uh, outside the Civic Auditorium at some point in the future. Um, as some of you in the room who have been following the evolution of the discussions about the Civic, which has been going on for a very long time, know um, there are four basic categories of potential uses for the Civic that are most frequently talked about. Those are a, um, a performing arts facility, a cultural arts facility that doesn't include performing arts, some kind of meeting and conference facility, and finally, some adaptive reuse of the building for some other, perhaps, commercial use uh, that doesn't involve uh, the arts in, in any particular way. Um, those are not necessarily mutually exclusive, as we'll talk about. They could be mixed in some ways. But what we want to talk about next um, are those four potential uses for the Civic. We want to give you some illustrations of uh, what each of those uh, ideas are like using examples from around the U.S. and in a couple of cases from overseas to get those ideas firmly in your mind and use those as the basis for some conversation to come. So let's walk, let's walk through those. Um, first, before we talk about the examples, I think it's important that you keep in mind certain things about the scale of the existing Civic Auditorium building and site so that you have some frame of reference for these examples that we're going to cover. The building itself is about 74,000 square feet in total space, and the auditorium seats somewhere between uh, 3,000 and 3,500. The site, it's, the entire site is a little over 10 acres and uh, accommodates uh, nearly 1,000 parking spaces, not including the parking structure uh, in the corner. And of course, the site, as we've talked about already, uh, is intimately connected and adjacent, not intimately connected to, but adjacent to uh, all the other civic buildings, City Hall, uh, the courthouse, the high school, the Ocean Park community, Tongva Park, the Rand Corporation, and the related project across Main Street, and within relatively close walking distance of uh, downtown, the pier, and the beach. So the, the location of the site um, and its opportunities is particularly important. Okay, so the, the four general uses for the Civic that have been discussed over the years and have been a focus of uh, discussion by the Civic Working Group uh, during the, uh, the previous eight months that it's been in operation are, are these four. Again, Performing Arts Center, Cultural Center, Meeting and Conference Facility, or Adaptive Reuse for some uh, commercial purpose. In selecting the examples I'm going to describe next, uh, we went through a careful process of trying to find examples that are relevant to this site uh, and are instructive. Um, and so we looked, we looked at uh, three basic uh, criteria in trying to pick these examples. First, we tried to find examples of each of the four uses for the Civic Auditorium that were roughly similar in scale um, to the Civic Auditorium, again, somewhere in the neighborhood of the 74,000 square feet and 10 acre site size. And then we also looked for examples like this site that are well integrated into the fabric of the cities in which they're, they're located as opposed to being on college campuses or isolated uses in other parts of, uh, of other areas. We also looked at the way that these facilities are programmed and used um, because the idea uh, here would be that whatever happens with the Civic Auditorium and the surrounding site would have a, a wide variety of uses, regardless of what goes on inside the Civic uh, Auditorium. Um, one can imagine a lot of very interesting other uses going on outside of it. And so many of the examples, uh, perhaps most, um, illustrate the kinds of opportunities that exist outside of the structure itself, as well as what goes on inside. 
We also try to find examples of, of projects that reflect general values in Santa Monica. For example, uh, buildings and sites that are uh, environmentally sensitive, uh, uh, you know, built uh, to, to try to accommodate uh, energy conservation and sensitivity to the environment, and, and, to, and to creating a place of uh, uh, vibrancy and civic pride. And then finally, we also looked at, uh, we tried to pick examples uh, where the use of the building helps establish a brand uh, an anchor for the surrounding area because the idea that we are uh, interested in pursuing and hopefully you agree is that if the entire 10 acre site can become a mixed use arts and cultural district that it is anchored by the civic auditorium so that the civic the uses of the civic become a key focal point for drawing attention to the site but it's not the only thing that happens so the first category of the four that we're going to talk about are uh, performing arts centers. And the three examples that we'd like to profile for you uh, are projects uh, uh, in Durham, North Carolina, uh, the uh, SF Jazz uh, facility in uh, the city of San Francisco, and the Fisher Building at the Brooklyn uh, Arts uh, Facility uh, in Brooklyn, New York. <coughs> Durham. Um, is an interesting example. It's uh, about twice the, uh, about a third more in floor area than the Civic Auditorium and has a seating capacity a little less than the Civic Auditorium. Um, but what's particularly interesting about this example is it's right in the middle of the city with a lot of Civic uses immediately around it. So it mirrors the context uh, of what we, of the opportunity that we have here with the Civic Auditorium. Uh, it, it showcases uh, a number of uh, Broadway shows, all kinds of music uh, performances. Um, and as I said, it's immediately adjacent to City Hall in Durham and has a variety of restaurants and open spaces uh, immediately around it. Um, it is uh, operated by our old friends, the Naderlander Organization, uh, which is a uh, for-profit events management company and illustrates one of many uh, long-term management options that such facilities uh, might be operated under. The second example is SF Jazz in San Francisco. Uh, it's about half the floor area of the uh, Civic Auditorium and a much smaller seating capacity. But what's particularly interesting about SF Jazz is the range and variety of musical events that it, it, it accommodates. It's a, a foremost uh, and well-regarded uh, a performing arts space that attracts and provides uh, a pretty wide range of different uh, concert opportunities. And here again, importantly, it is located right in the heart of the San Francisco Civic Center, adjacent to City Hall, the Opera House, and a variety of retail and restaurants around it, all of which make for a particularly vibrant and active uh, site and condition, which is, uh, I think, and hope that, uh, that you'll agree, would be something to aspire for for the property here in Santa Monica. It is operated by a private nonprofit uh, organization. The third of example of a performing arts facility is the Fisher Building at, uh, uh, at BAM in, um, in New York City in, in Brooklyn. It's about roughly two-thirds the size of the uh, Civic Auditorium in terms of floor area. Very small uh, theater seating capacity compared to our Civic Auditorium, but hosts an incredibly wide variety of uh, theater, music, dance, and other kinds of performing arts and community-oriented uh, events, again, which is a very important feature of the thinking about the Civic Auditorium over the year, that it just not be, you know, formal ticketed events, you know, that might cost a lot of money, but that it also provide a variety of, uh, of activities and events that would be available and open to the general public uh, and take advantage of the, the, the wealth of talent and sophisticated uh, arts and, uh, and, uh, and other uh, interests that exist in the city of Santa Monica and, and the west side uh, more generally. But this is just one building at the much larger uh, Brooklyn Academy of Music, um, but uh, provides a, an interesting example. And of course, you can tell by the, the rich character of the building itself. Um, that it's uh, an interesting adaptive use of, of that facility. So th those are the three examples. 
Now, all of these have a, as I said, a very interesting combination of events that take place inside the building itself, but also in the surrounding area, all of which are or oriented towards the performing arts, uh, you know, whether that's music, dance, theater. I think we'll skip this slide, um, uh, Remy, but um, this is, this is uh, e each of these uh, four comparisons basically just show uh, uh, the scale comparison to the examples to the Civic Auditorium, but uh, I think that's less important than thinking about the examples themselves. Okay, the second general category of potential use for our Civic Auditorium would be a cultural center, which means that it accommodates, it could accommodate a wide range of artistic uh, activities, but not necessarily space for the performing arts. The first example uh, we want to mention is Fort Mason Center, uh, another example from San Francisco. This is a very interesting development on historic, uh, in old buildings on historic piers in San Francisco Bay. In total floor area, it's much larger than the Civic Auditorium, um, but the site acreage involved is, is fairly, fairly comparable. These are highly programmed spaces that are run uh, by the Fort Mason Center, a nonprofit organization that provides a, a, a wide range of exhibitions, crafts, food fairs, and various other things, um, some of which are examples of activities that have been hosted in our Civic Auditorium before, but goes much beyond that. Uh, it's, a, it's a really treasured uh, facility in the San Francisco region uh, that accommodates a very wide range of uses um, but it, like our Civic Auditorium, also has some very profound physical limitations because in a couple of cases, the piers underneath the buildings are crumbling and are going to require some very expensive repairs. So they are facing some of the same challenges that we are dealing with here uh, with our Civic Auditorium. The next example is from Santa Cruz. Um, this is the uh, Tannery Digital Media and Creative Arts Center, which is a very interesting mixed-use uh, facility that provides not only space for artists to, uh, uh, to work and to display their, uh, uh, their work products, but it also provides uh, about 100 units of uh, residential space for those artists to live on site. Uh, in terms of uh, total floor area, it's about a third the size of the Civic Auditorium, um, but close to the amount of acreage that we have here, uh, eight versus about uh, 10 acres. Um, the, uh, uh, the uses that occur here, in addition to uh, uh, gallery and uh, art working artist display space, uh, include events uh, by the Santa Cruz Ballet uh, and the first Fridays and Saturdays uh, 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 performances that, are, that occur in some of the spaces there, along with a wide range of classes uh, uh, for, as you can see, a, a pretty wide range of, of things, in, including comedy uh, and open mic nights. So this is, again, these are examples of, uh, of where cultural events take place, although the building itself is not uh, designed to accommodate, uh, you know, finely crafted acoustics for, uh, performance, for um, uh, performing arts. Okay, the third example, which may seem a little strange to you becomes, because it comes from a very small town in Norway, um, uh, we selected primarily because its scale and the way the outside of the building is used is very instructive. It's almost the same size as the Civic Auditorium. Um, uh, the seating capacity of the facility is close to what we have in the Civic Auditorium today. But what's particularly interesting about the Plaza and Cultural Center in Mold, Norway, um, is not only the, uh, the way that the building itself is used to accommodate a really wide range of cultural events, but the wide range of activities that occur outside the building. It's a very lively, well-used, um, its contemporary uh, design um, lends itself to a lot of outdoor performances and gathering. Um, and it's a, a, a very interesting example of a primarily cultural center focused use. And here again, um, what goes on inside and outside the building, all three of these examples as cultural centers is, is quite wide um, in terms of the, the nature of the events, the uh, performances, both formal and informal, a wide range of community oriented uses, 
and lots of activity on the sites outside these buildings, which make the entire campus around these buildings uh, exciting and vibrant. Let's skip the numbers. Okay. The third category, which has been discussed to one degree or another, is to convert the Civic Auditorium to a conference and meeting facility. Um, the, uh, there are, um, you know, there have been discussions by various interests uh, about the lack of such facilities in Santa Monica because although each of the hotels, um, to one degree or another, has some meeting and conference space, um, there are some limitations to the, uh, the amount of such space. And the, there has been some thinking that if the Civic could be used to accommodate larger uh, meetings and conferences of various kinds, that that would work very well with the uh, hotel stock that we have in Santa Monica. But there are some counter arguments to that view as well. But we want to give you a few examples of some interesting meeting and conference centers to help you think about how viable that use might be for the Civic Auditorium were to be used for that instead of a cultural center or performing arts facility. So the three we want to highlight here uh, are the hub series of spaces in Philadelphia, which should be PA, not PN, um, and uh, the, uh, the World Conference Center in Bonn, Germany, and the Pasadena Conference Center, which some of you may know uh, from uh, traveling around the, the region. The first one, uh, the hub in, in, in Philadelphia, is actually a series of three different places uh, around the city of Philadelphia uh, that are sponsored by a for-profit B corporation, which has a distinctly community-oriented focus to it. Um, the largest of the three is this one, which is about 24,000 square feet, about a third of the size of the Civic Auditorium, uh, and it has a seating capacity equal to uh, what the Civic uh, currently holds. What goes on in these spaces is a wide range of corporate meetings, uh, local meetings, uh, various kinds of presentations, and uh, holiday parties. Um, there, are, uh, there is a, a distinct intention on the part of the operators uh, to be environmentally sensitive. They, uh, they feature, as the slide indicates, sustainable uh, food catering, uh, a lot of natural light in the design. Um, and it is a transit uh, accessible facility as well. But it, is, it was designed intentionally to accommodate this particular use. The second example from, uh, from Bonn, Germany, is a building about two thirds the size of the Civic Auditorium. Um, I believe this was con converted from a public, uh, 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 was it City Hall or? This is Remy Montego from my office. It was a Congress hall, really, for the government. OK. So this is a conversion of a, a, a public government facility into a sophisticated meeting and uh, conference space um, that currently houses a, a wide range of private and public meetings and uh, all kinds of, uh, of exhibitions. Um, and it's located adjacent to uh, various hotels, um, you know, which obviously is important for a meeting and conference facility. Uh, and it is uh, operated. Uh, by the World Conference Center uh, management team. The last example is the one that some of you may be more familiar with, which is the uh, Conference Center in Pasadena, which is one part of the uh, Convention Center uh, related facilities uh, that the Pasadena Civic Center Operating Company, a nonprofit organization, manages in uh, Pasadena. This is their Conference Center, which is linked to the other facilities. Uh, it's about uh, about a third the size of the Civic Auditorium uh, in terms of square footage. And, uh, but it, uh, um, the convention center itself uh, has about the same seating capacity as uh, our Civic Auditorium. And the two buildings work together uh, quite well. The meetings that occur here at the Pasadena uh, Conference Center are, are a pretty wide range of private and uh, other kinds of, of Civic meetings. But again, it's a sensitively designed uh, facility right in the middle of, uh, of downtown Pasadena so that it, it, uh, it makes very important connections to the surrounding city rather than being an isolated, uh, you know, sort of campus-oriented uh, conference center. And here again, uh, even though uh, these uses uh, have nothing obvious to do with arts and cultural activities, because of the way that they're designed and located in, in the core of their uh, urban context, there are a very wide range of things that go on both inside and outside the building, the sum of which make them 
uh, very exciting and vibrant places. The fourth and last category of potential use for the Civic Auditorium is a complete departure. And this is, this is a strategy that has been used uh, with a number of uh, historic facilities uh, around the US and overseas. And it involves taking the historic structure and converting it to uh, adaptively uh, uh, renovating it to accommodate a completely different kind of use. It could be, for example, that one, when we and the Civic Working Group dig into the hard numbers, about what it's going to take to rehab the Civic Auditorium and perhaps convert it, explore converting it to a performing arts facility that meets current zoning, seismic safety, and acoustic and audience requirement standards, that the cost is just completely prohibitive. Um, and it is, you know, it is conceivable that we may have to look in a different direction. All of that to be determined. But one possibility, again, just for discussion purposes, would be to look at adaptive, re <laughs> adaptive reuse um, of the building for a different kind of use. And, and these are two examples of how that's been done, uh, one again in San Francisco and one in downtown Los Angeles. The 5M building um, in San Francisco um, is, uh, this is the old uh, San Francisco Chronicle building, which has been adaptively uh, reused uh, for a very interesting mix of, uh, uh, of office, dwelling units, and retail, but also accommodates uh, a variety of, of businesses and institutions that have an arts and cultural orientation to them. So it's not exclusively uh, you know, just for private use. There are, there are a number of, of events and activities that occur here, and the tenanting strategy for the building is carefully designed to attract a lot of creative uses um, that, uh, that also interact in one way or another with the art scene in San Francisco. So while it is principally a, a, a commercial building, um, it's not exclusively that and provides at least some inkling of, uh, of how those two might be, might be combined. This is a privately operated uh, project by uh, Forest City, which is a very large and well-regarded development company. I would add to that, actually, that it's also also operated by a nonprofit called Intersection for the Arts. They jointly operate this project, and part of the reason why this is such a fabulous example, um, we think, is that um, the two add value to each other. So the arts community is really um, helping, you know, the commercial tenants think, you know, um, foster technology and entrepreneurship and making, and like what, you know, there's some synergy there. Thanks, Remy. Okay. The, the second example of adaptive reuse is one that, again, you may know because it just opened within the last six months, which is the Ace Hotel in uh, downtown Los Angeles, um, which, is, uh, uh, which has this spectacular uh, theater in it that is now being actively programmed for a wide variety of uses. Um, it, uh, it, it's, it's a hotel, um, obviously, with about 180 uh, rooms but it also operates in combination with this spectacular theater. Um, and one of the interesting things about the uh, uh, Ace Hotel Company, um, which I believe began in New York um, and is now expanding to other places around the US, is that they are very, very uh, interested in making sure that the artistic activity that occurs here, uh, and there's a pretty wide range of it, uh, is well grounded in the art scene in, uh, in Los Angeles, and they go out of their way to try to find um, interesting local talent uh, to be showcased here, um, as opposed to you know, drawing uh, on other, uh, other types of, uh, of uh, activity. So uh, the point of this is that, uh, is that there are ways to blend these things together, even if they are uh, nominally a, uh, a private use of space. Now, as I said at the outset, we've sort of presented these four ideas to you as mutually exclusive. Uh, they need not be. Um, there are ways to combine them uh, in different ways so that it is possible, for example, if the Civic were to be rehabbed for a performance space, that part of it could be used for uh, galleries, for uh, working artist presentation, for cafes uh, and, uh, or dining facilities and other kinds of things. So, um, one could think about these as combination uses within the shell of the Civic Auditorium as opposed to distinctly uh, freestanding uses. 
But our, our hope is that at least these four uses provide some indication about what might happen with this, what could, in theory, happen with the Civic Auditorium. And what we'd, uh, what we'd really like to do next um, is to get some active conversation at your indiv individual tables uh, about these four uses and some, some discussion about uh, your preferences among the four uh, and, and also your ideas about the kinds of complementary uses that might occur outside of the Civic Auditorium to take advantage of this incredible 10-acre site uh, right in the middle of uh, the Civic Center of Santa Monica. So that uh, our next activity then uh, will be to have that conversation. Um, the Civic Working Group members and uh, city staff and others who are uh, at each of the tables with you have a couple of specific questions that they're going to want to have you discuss. And we're going to have about 45 minutes uh, to have those conversations. Uh, we're going to ask one person from each table then to summarize the discussion for the group. And then we'll give the Civic Working Group members at the end of the session a chance to reflect on what they've heard today. So have good conversations, and we'll reconvene as a group uh, in about 45 minutes. Uh, the Civic Working Group uh, is hopefully reconvening at our table. Um, if, as this proceeds, if any of you uh, come up with personal comments that you want to make, you can fill out a chit and give it to uh, Jessica Kusick, our staff member. Uh, but first, we will be hearing the report grab backs from the uh, table people. Uh, I hope you can uh, tell us everything that was said in a crisp and concise manner so we can uh, proceed. And then uh, after that, we'll have uh, just a public speaker time where you can all make your individual comments. And uh, that will be our day. So uh, with that. Thank you, Nina. I uh, hope you had good discussions as we were walking around and listening in, eavesdropping, as it were. It sounded like a lot of strong points of view and good conversation. So I, I hope that that was informative uh, and useful to you. And I know it's going to be useful to us and to the Civic Working Group. Um, as Nina said, what we'd like to do now is invite uh, one person from each table who uh, either volunteered or was nominated by their group um, to provide a brief, uh, not more than two minute summary of the key points of the discussion uh, that, uh, so that we can all have a chance to, uh, to hear about it. And a couple of ground rules for doing it. Um, because we're recording um, everything that's going on today, it's important that the reporters come up to uh, the microphone at either end of the room and sp uh, speak clearly into the mic so that we can pick up uh, what you have to say. Uh, and it's obviously important for the room as well. Also, um, I just want to say that one important thing I forgot to mention in the introduction is that inside your walking guide was this loose leaf a uh, couple of pages for recording notes and comments. Um, I, I know a lot of you uh, have already figured that out for yourselves and have been diligently scribbling away, um, making your, your notes and comments. But at the end of today's session, uh, we're going to want you to drop these off at a box, Lisa. Uh, I'm not sure where it is. Right there with the pink box that says survey. The pink box that says survey over on the table. So please be sure if you, if you have comments that you want to leave behind um, that you do so on your way out today. That will be very important additional information for us to work with. Okay, so um, let's, uh, let's start uh, sort of, we have 10 tables, I believe, um, that we were working with. So let's start with table number 10. <laughs> don't, don't worry, I'm not going to do this in order. <laughs> okay, well, when you come up, uh, please give us your name and, uh, and then uh, a brief summary of the conversation. I'm David Pletner Saunders, representing Table 10. David, please speak into the mic. Thank you. For the use of the uh, auditorium itself, we I would say we had pretty much consensus on a performing arts and cultural use um, with some flexibility built in. 
complementary uh, uses, just some highlights of the discussion. Uh, an outside performance space with green space, um, cafe and restaurants, artists live work, public art, and integration with Sam High's campus. Um, for the third question, hopes and concerns about the use of the site as a mixed-use cultural district, comments were to keep it low density, to emphasize community-based use, integrating with the Pico and Ocean Park neighborhoods, and traffic and parking were concerns. Great. Thank you very much, David. We also said about field space. Sorry? About field space. Okay, very good. That, that was helpful. Okay, let's go to table number one. We agree, table number one agrees that uh, uh, the use as a performing location is, is very important. Uh, one thing that was brought up at our table was that, that whatever we end up with is a very much a management issue so that it gets managed well so that it can be used pretty much round the clock. We feel that, that the fact that it might get used for one concert on a Thursday night and then be empty all the time, that's what, what we believe led to the lack of success before. So uh, we think it's a major management issue. Um, we do, do believe that, or I mean, much discussion, some disagreement, but um, uh, the use for trade shows, for large gatherings is excellent. Um, it was also brought up, however, that the thing that, that was least well served by the Civic Center was the highest quality level of concerts. Um, and so there was some discussion that, that perhaps one, of course this will come into question three, that um, a, a you know, again, highest quality facility, concert hall, could perhaps be included in the overall plan. Let's see, now let's go on to the second question. Uh, things that would complement the preferred use. Uh, first of all, more interaction with the high school. We think that uh, in terms of additional usages, the usage of the, uh, the Greek theater could be increased. In fact, currently we realize the Greek theater is almost unused. Basically, it's empty. Uh, there are ab about three or four functions a year total, and if some serious development occurred there, such as a an actual concert shell, improved seating, lighting, things like that, it could be an outdoor space that could be used very frequently. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, we, of course, thought in terms of parking, parking is very important. Uh, it was proposed that parking could be uh, organized under the f football field across the way and then a footbridge, so that's just somehow tying in further connections with, with the high school. Uh, the, um, in the third question, we, we felt it was important to differentiate what we do here with the Third Street Promenade. Of course, there's been much suggestion about restaurants, shops, commercial, things like that. Well, there's a lot of that going on at the Third Street Promenade, which is not far away. Uh, it was discussed at our table that we need to keep this very distinct in terms of the, the, the quality and, and, and dimension of the, the activities that would occur here. So that the Civic Auditorium serves very well for large shows, large theater productions. You know, you could have productions of, of uh, you know, Les Miserables and things like that. This, this is great for that. Of course, the trade shows have been beautifully served here. We, we brought up the, the point of, we worried that, this, that if the city is left to manage uh, this space for a long time, it might be another example of what happened with the paper mate building which there had been much city discussion back and forth and has been, in fact, vacant and unused for 25 years. We're afraid that could happen here. So we, we feel it's important to bring in a good management company as soon as possible to help bring this thing along. Uh, there's also the discussion that um, some of what's, what's being proposed for the Bergamont Station area, some of that kind of arts community could possibly occupy this site. I think that's about all I can figure out at the moment. Thank Great. you very Thank much. You very much. Thank you. Miriam, uh, what was the table number there? Nine. Nine? OK. Got it? Thank you. 
Good afternoon, my name's Hera Beck, member of the Arts Commission, and my beautiful assistant Maria is gonna help me read all the stuff that we wrote down. Um, first of all, question number one, best use. Uh, to preserve the old auditorium if possible, less parking, but parking is necessary, to make the uses as diverse as possible, no hotels, combination performing arts center, uh, concert and cultural center, we would like all three, um, park space as much open space as possible. More for the residents than for the tourists, not some huge um, draw for outside people. Is there, the, uh, is there an audience to support another performance venue? We need subsidies for performers. If a sound system if it is, is improved, uh, can we keep the auditorium as is or as is restored? Uh, we have a concern about bringing in private developers. We want to minimize the film events with support of um, some conve convention activities. We need definitely a better sound system. Uh, we need coordination with other venues so that we can draw people from um, other parts of the city when Royce Hall is an open or um, Kirk Douglas Theater or places like that. Complementary use. Um, shuttles for people uh, to complement parking. Uh, the music center sponsors shuttles from uh, restaurants. I've been there. Do we have to um, do we have to densify the site in order to pay for a performing cultural center? Um, no housing, no hotels, no creative office. <laughs> well, maybe a little live work because I'm working on that. Marriage of uh, marriage of performance and cultural um, components. Conference space for and maybe cheaper. Uh, bridge to the Greek theater at Samuel High. Um, I have uh, Love ECEC, -E I'm not sure what that is. Uh, say, oh, early childhood, duh. Early childhood education. Uh, we have doubts about connecting use with Samo High because it's a school. That's uh, one person's opinion. Telluride Film Festival as an example. Um, Ventura example, artists live works possibility. Uh, events held at the beach parking lots uh, like Spirits Awards could be here. Profit sharing could uh, keep, uh, uh, keep or support this venue. The city is overdeveloped and too expensive. This should be for residents. Um, we got more to go. Concerns. Overdevelopment for tourists, not residents. Do something affordable, nice. Re restore the auditorium, keep parking. Scale back the ambition of the project. Keep it simple. Move the driveway to the other side, the east side. Make the green belt connection with the south and north. Um, then we have Eric's diagram, which is three concentric circles, the three interlocking circles, um, meaning um, they're the synergistic use of, of all three um, community, help me Eric, community, uh, performance, and cultural, am I right? I hope so. Uh, we need a 24 hour bus service, BBB, because Expo won't connect it all. We can't support this with just Santa Monica residents. Why isn't there a Santa Monica repertory theater? Combination of for-profit, non-profit might be helping uh, run this place. Less is more, don't overdo, and then the last one, is this the last one? Underground parking. Is that it? Thank you. Thank you for my beautiful assistant, Maria. Well done, thank you. Okay, uh, table number four. Mr. Feinstein. <laughs> So, everybody at table four, hold up your hands. We had a very two, lively two, discussion. Two minutes, Michael. What's that? <laughs> two minutes. <laughs> and uh, so we started by kind of grokking on the question about whether it's needs or wants. And we kind of figured at this point we're really thinking about wants. And we talked a lot about having the site be very flexible. It, in the past has been fle very flexible, so we didn't really center on a specific use as much as we wanted to be able to fit a range of needs, including taking advantage of the fact that we have a lot of residents nearby, we have hotels nearby, we have a school nearby. That also helped us lead into what is gonna be the programming at Barnum and the Greek, and maybe other facilities around, and thinking about actually trying to meet those needs together. So on this site, we did think performances, but also the idea of conferences and, and meeting spaces as well. And there were exhibitions that we always liked in the past that we didn't want to have to go away. So flexibility there. Then on the second one, the, the complement, we really wanted Forth and Pico to stay open 
so that you can see from Forest Street what's going on and to have the open space be something so that people might be there and eating before an event that is coming here. So that kind of mixes back and forth. So there might be a food use, whether it was a in-place food use with a restaurant or whether it was a small, or whether it was a food truck, you know, that could still be uh, very open. And we also talked about the pedestrian connections over to the expo line, how we're we gonna relate going north route through the facility, whether there should be another building next to the Childhood Center or that should be open or not, where people are going to go up Main Street or on Forest Street to get to the rail line. And then, finishing in two minutes, You're doing the fun. wow factor. What was going to be something that really punched out in your mind so that people around the, the, the community wanted to actually come down here? And that's both with the use and, and the architecture. To the degree that there might be something more, we talked about the corner at Main Street, rather than developing 4th and, and, and Pico because the idea of keeping 4th and Pico open for Ocean Park neighbors to flow through the project and have it be visible was really embraced and also so that the uses didn't overwhelm the neighborhood, whether it was nighttime noise or traffic to protect the character of Ocean Park and, and not uh, do too much. And then I think we all w were hoping there would be a money tree. Um, <laughs> but, but that's about it in a rare time that I get Great. done under two minutes. Very Thank good you. job. Thank you. Very good. Okay, let's, uh, how about if we hear f uh, from table seven? Got my helper here, so uh, I don't affect my hernia like lifting that. Just kidding. Uh, the first one's, what's the, what do you think is the best use for the Civic uh, Auditorium building? Number one, we got multi-use connections. Next is the hub of the hub of arts tradition continued, education arts uh, technical. That's number one. Next is what activity uses do you think complement your preferred use for the Civic Auditorium? First, we had mixed use of arts, parking, athletics. Next was semi integration. Next was pedestrian connections around the area. And then there were some differing op opinions about retail and the new buildings, et cetera, et cetera. Next, last but not least, what are your hopes and concerns about the use of the site as a mixed use culture district? Hopeful, this is a hub. We had an expression, two heads of the barbell, Bergamont and Civic. Last but not least, to be a community resource. Excellent, thank Under you very minutes. much. Okay, uh, how about uh, table two, right here? reporting for table two. Um, we uh, agreed uh, very much that the best use for the Civic Auditorium would be to further, further continue and expand its performing arts functions, but we gave essentially equal support to expanding other cultural uh, functions, uh, perhaps uh, adding a museum um, uh, and maybe space, for example, for archival exhibits of Santa Monica artists. Um, <clears throat> a lot of uh, discussion uh, came up about the use of uh, some of the uncommitted space right now, including the fourth and Pico quadrant. Um, some suggested uh, low-cost housing. Um, uh, there was some discussion about the proposed preschool. Uh, there was there were discussions about the use for expanded purposes for Semo High. But in general, uh, the people felt that the working group had to really examine all of these very carefully uh, because there was a concern about the fact that there were very many good ideas or needed projects, but how many of them could be jammed into one space uh, without altering or diminishing um, its unique function as a um, performing and cultural center. We also uh, were in support, but in a very limited way, for um, some expanded use for conference and meeting uh, functions of the site. Uh, 
And we were very much in favor of expanding uh, some green space instead of all the hardscape that we have here. Um, and I think we didn't really conclude on, on how much space uh, should be really all considered a public space. I personally did. Um, so that's. Excellent summary. Thank you very much. You're all doing a great job summarizing. Um, let's hear from uh, table five. Sounds great. Hi, we are Anne and Anne, and we're from Table 5. We um, are a group of longtime residents, um, with a, all with a history of active involvement in the community. We're families and parents, and um, we just really appreciate this venue, and we're happy to be here. Um, I'm going to give you a quick overview of kind of our thought process in getting to where we got, and then Anne's going to give you the specifics. Um, we asked what are our values as a community and how can this area showcase those values. And our values are obviously can, you know, performing arts, cultural values, um, public education. This is a community that places a huge premium on public education and then um, also on green space and openness and a place to be a community. Um, we'd love to see this be the heart of the city, a town hall, a gathering place, an incredible world-class civic space. Um, and we want whatever goes here to serve our town and our residents. And we think to that end, less is more. And I give you Anne. Thank you. Hi, performance art space. That's what we want. That's what we decided. Um, we looked at trade shows. We thought about trade shows. We discussed them up and down. We all liked them. However, we don't feel that this will fit into this venue because uh, in order to put two things in the same space, you have so-so on either end. So performance arts topped our list with zero trade show integration. Um, and that's why we nixed the idea. We uh, thought about high ticket performances and also the opportunity to offer those tickets out on a first come basis like Rexcape does, whereby citizens, uh, residents of the city get the first opportunity on those tickets uh, and then it would go out next to the, the larger public. Um, we also discussed the opportunity on the outside and to bridge uh, that gap between SAMO and the parking lot, we want the open green space. We talked about the front end of uh, the building um, also as possibly being a place where we could take some of that space where the loading is, um, enhance some more green space there, do some outside art projection um, on, that, on that wall or any other uh, pro outside performance opportunities. Uh, we also talked about inviting a unique local restaurant opportunity uh, just off the back side that would be both inviting to attendees at the Civic as well as the Pico neighbors. Um, we, uh, let's see, we, uh, so we're gonna just do a quick poll here and wanted to know who thinks the best use of the, uh, the, the Civic space should be performing arts. Mm -hmm. Any hands? Okay, we wanted to know who thinks that the parking lot uh, should encourage parking and a small restaurant. Okay, well, there, I'm sure there are lots of choices, so we probably don't have time to go through them all. Um, well, who, who wants a hotel? <laughs> who wants an office space? Okay. Who wants retail? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I, I just wanted to ask sure. Paul a question yeah. about this. Uh, how, how else can this be delivered besides delivering it today? All, all of the materials from today's workshops will be on the city's website on the Civic Auditorium page after today's meeting. So if you, if you want more time uh, to fill it out or uh, just d didn't want to do it today, you can do it online. Until what time? Uh, I, I, I'm, not I'm not sure about the details of it yet. Okay. Sure. Well. Good, thank you. Thank you very much for your summary. Okay, can we hear from uh, uh, table six? 
Bruce? Oh, Bruce, before you begin, let me just interrupt for one second. Um, I, Lisa, have we said anything um, about uh, public comments, uh, about people needing to sign up if they're going to make public comments today? Right, this, just uh, by way of reminder, this is a formal public meeting of the Civic Working Group and we are following the usual city procedures so that there will be an opportunity for general public comment um, when we're done with the reporting back process. So if people f are moved to uh, say more, uh, there are uh, sign-up sheets uh, at the table there and then we'll take public comment after we're done with the reporting back process. Thanks. Sorry, Bruce. No problem. Uh, my name is Bruce, uh, table six. I think the criteria to get at table six, you have to be a 30 plus year resident. And <laughs> so it was kind of wonderful to get uh, a sense of all of that history. It's, uh, it's great. Uh, we didn't reach uh, total agreement on everything, but we came to pretty close to consensus on many things, uh, which was good. Uh, nuancing was kind of interesting. The um, in terms of the questions to be asked, uh, what do we think could be the best use for the Civic Auditorium building? First thing, as a general principle, we looked at saying, hey, the history of the Civic is just absolutely glorious. And it's something that we uh, love, cherish, and want to keep going. When you look at the uses that the, uh, the Civic has had over the years, it really is it, so diverse, it's quite wonderful. And what we now have is, when, since the Civic was being built, we have this new thing called technology and all kinds of other things going on. So we would like to preserve the, exist, the original uses to the extent that we can and as wide and diverse as they are, but include an update to include the current technologies. What that would mean is perhaps we can't have things like uh, economically sustainable ballet company, but we sure as heck can get uh, an electronic submission from the Ballet Russe or the Bolshoi to be shown in a live event at the newly refurbished Santa Monica Civic. There's all kinds of things that can happen uh, in this uh, wonderful space and we're excited and want to encourage all of that, but use that. Our guiding principle, that was it. Um, we looked at uh, performing arts as a part of that precisely. It's, it's exactly what it's been used for in the past and we we're, we're want to find the right mix. I guess the market will help us do that over time, but we want to find the right mixes. Uh, we were also interested in a TV and film uh, involvement in the venue, uh, whether that be given the businesses that are currently available in town, uh, the employment level that's in town, the agencies, etc., that represent many of these folks. Uh, we would like to bring them in as a part of that mix. Uh, all good stuff. Um, I won't go on about the economics of it because that's the subject of the next meeting. But um, we think that there's some potentially some great, great solutions going on out there. Uh, activities we think could complement. Uh, we didn't spend a lot of time on it, but uh, we, we do note that you're going to need parking or we're going to need some parking uh, involved in it. Um, interestingly, I noticed that some of the... Um, Resident groups in town are looking at uh, perhaps making as low a footprint as possible uh, for parking and perhaps in adding some height to it. That mix, etc. we'll chat about that, but we're, we're open to hearing those kinds of things. Um, we didn't throw out any um, uses as being absolutely not well, there was not a lot of uh, sympathy for hotels uh, and not a lot of sympathy for uh, office use either um, 
on the site. So, and then the third question, our hopes and concerns. Um, let's start with our hopes. Is we, our hopes are that uh, there's some lovely green space here, and perhaps there could be even more. To the extent that we can achieve that and work it economically into an economically feasible total site, uh, that would be great. Um, so that's an aspiration at this point more than anything else. But um, the major concerns are traffic, parking, um, and frankly, the cost of the whole thing. We're looking at uh, at least $60 million, and how are we going to pay for that? Whew. Right, that is the subject of a future workshop. Absolutely. Uh, we did have one suggestion, and that was, I think we're looking for uh, a rich man somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Bruce. All right. Well done. Okay, we have just a couple more to go. Uh, how about table eight? Eight. Save the best for last. Hi, my name is Angelica Gunn, and I am representing Table 8. So um, in our discussion of what we would like the Civic Auditorium to be used for, it was overwhelmingly as a performing arts center. Everybody at our table really thought performing arts is a priority, although it varied from uh, top of the line exclusive performing arts to finding some way to meld performing arts with convention capabilities. Um, a big part of our discussion was also to keep it community focused. Uh, you could make a state of the art facility where you've got Broadway musicals, which was great and brings revenue, but we really want to be sure that our community has first priority for using that space. Um, as far as the grounds outside, again, big focus on making it available for the community, for the community to use. There were a lot of uh, concerns about uh, getting here. So, you know, as far as bridges to different, like over to the high school, if you're going to use those facilities or to the train, as well as maybe having a shuttle service to get people from wherever they live here rather than always needing to drive over. Um, we really also wanted to see this space be an open space and a green space. So like a, a town square or a mini central park, you know, you put grass, you put paths, you put some water features or fountains, you can have movies in the park, you can have concerts in the park, you could you know, make some areas where food trucks can come in and provide for food. But really keeping it as an open area for where community events can be held and that we don't just have cars here. Um, and it also came up that, you know, in our discussion about making this space also available for conventions, one could potentially use some space of the parking lot to build a convention hall. And then you don't need to do that in the auditorium as well. And then um, hopes and dreams, again, community-based, that this is a space for the community of Santa Monica and the West Side and um, keep as much commercial influence out as we can. Um, Again, the keeping the space open, keeping um, avoiding a lot of buildings and a lot of structures, but really keeping the open space. We have too much development in Santa Monica as it is. And then, of course, parking, 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 <laughs> and traffic. That so we really need to figure out ways to provide parking for those people that drive in and um, also traffic because we have a lot of, you know, downtown, it's sometimes really hard to get through where you want to go. So that's Great. the summary from Thank our table. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and then last but not least, uh, table three. My name's Mike Salazar. I'm an architect, and I was part of the original Save the Civic group that uh, forged this process to happen. And thank you to this group and, and to everybody at the city for making this happen. Um, the main emphasis for our table is to respect the history and the past of this great civic auditorium and to bring back events that made the building famous, um, you know, performing arts, uh, concerts, you know, a diverse range of events, uh, but also make it available for some uh, other, you know, more profit making perhaps events as well. Um, 
the, I'm just trying to read this with my glasses. Uh, the, the main emphasis was that, to, to keep it as that historic use. Um, the arts use, I think, was uh, a big push to have it um, uh, with uh, an updated approach. So there's some economic uh, uh, benefits, um, upgrading the building also, so it becomes a world-class building. Uh, uh, make a grand entry. Uh, back, you know, you've seen the photographs of the Academy Awards that feature the, the entry of the building. Um, figure out how to improve uh, the area around it and, and uh, make some positive changes. Um, I'm having trouble reading this because my eye. The, another big uh, issue was the connectivity to the neighborhood. I just live five blocks down the street and I walk past her all the time and it's a difficult place to walk past, especially when we look at light uh, of the light rail that's coming. Um, so that that's important as you it, uh, also. The low scale uh, was also a, a major point that was emphasized over all of the issues that we talked about. Um, the idea of having a conference uh, center or something that would be complementary um, that would also include this process. Uh, that and uh, one of the other important things was again the, uh, dealing with connectivity is the idea of being able to bridge across to the school, but also bridge over Fourth Street. Fourth Street was really problematic at our table because if any of you have walked on it, you're you get speeding cars going at you and it really feels dangerous and it it is dangerous so the idea of having some kind of either an esplanade like the fourth uh in in colorado to the pier or doing some kind of a bridge structure that would get us past the freeway to the light rail um, and and the the hopes and concerns that we had um, is the idea of some kind of mixed use. Um, restaurants came up, uh, not a lot, but strategically placed that would activate the street, activate the outdoor space around it, and bring more of a 20, well, I wouldn't say 24 hour, um, bring more of a range of activity times. Um, the, and somehow figuring out how to integrate better into the child uh, the child center, but also there was a concern raised about that location just because of pollution and the traffic and things like that, even though we, we all know it's a given that it's going there, but there was a concern about that. Um, the, the also idea to respectfully, respectfully revitalize the landmark. Um, again, this is the key reason that we're here, and there are adaptive ways to reuse this building, and we, we unfortunately didn't really see good examples of that, but um, it's important to know that we can make changes to this building that would make it appropriate. Um, but also the concern about them being low scaled and whatever happens to this and around it. Um, the, audi the auditorium essentially is the crown jewel uh, that should stand out in a low scale uh, treatment of this civic center area uh, that would have some economic benefit. Um, and, but again, it's low scale. And we, we were less supportive of the soccer field. I think we heard that you know, there, the, it, it could be placed, uh, you know, at Lincoln School or, you know, even hopefully at the airport park. Um, but lots of open space. Um, and Almost again, wrapped up there, Mike. yes, the idea of uh, the low scale, the uh, no hotel, that was almost unanimous. Uh, no office space, that was unanimous. Um, activate Main and Pico, respectful to the neighborhoods, and also not... Uh, force a uh, development mentality that changes the character of the existing uh, Main and Pico streets. Okay. That's it. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, folks, we've now heard, I, th I think, from all of the tables, and I just want to say that uh, it's an amazing range of ideas, very thoughtful comments, great ideas, uh, and we'll be doing our own sort of content analysis on what we've heard today. Um, and we'll have an opportunity in a, in a few moments for 
the uh, civic working group members to reflect a little bit on what they've heard today as well. But I think at this point, we, uh, I'll turn it back to Nina as the chair to manage the uh, uh, public comment process. But thank you to all the groups for your great comments today. Very nice. Those were great reports. Um, I just want to say that as citizen facilitators in this process, we were all a little nervous, and this has been a really great experience. And I know I had a great time with my group, and I was really excited to see the way everybody listened to each other and developed their ideas. That was really great. So uh, for our next part of the process, uh, people have been handing in these speaker cards, which you see, so that everyone can get their final, fully rounded opinion expressed for the group. And, uh, the for, and if you have any more of these cards, you can hand them to a staff member. I'm looking for Jessica, so she can, she's back there in the purple shirt, or Lisa, or anybody who looks like they might want to take it. <laughs> um, our first speaker is Ann Hoover. And you can use either one of the microphones. And I will let you know who the next two are so that you can be ready. After Ann will be Bruria and then Anthony Schmidt. Thank you so much, Nina. I feel really lucky to go first. And I actually don't have that much to say because I really feel like there's a pretty big consensus about what most people in this group would like to see here, and that is a beautifully revitalized civic center as a performing arts center with green space, integration with the surrounding neighborhood, and maybe a restaurant or a few other small businesses that support that function. I think that's really exciting. So the only other thing I have to say is I was going to say the decision about what to do with the Civic Center and the surrounding land is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And it's not just once-in-a-lifetime, it's once-in-a-city's lifetime, which is hundreds of years. And I really want to see us be very deliberate and very unified and really civil about what to do with it and really make something amazing that will serve our town for many, many, many generations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Okay. In general, we don't usually clap or anything during public comment, so everybody feels free and open to say whatever they want. Um, it just makes it easier for people to be open. Uh, Breweria Finkel is our Here next. Here I am. Oh, she's over there. Oh, Hi. Look at Hi, you Breweria. guys. Look at you guys. Okay, after Anthony Schmidt will be Peter Naughton and then Louise Steiner. First, I'd like to thank the group, and i particularly like to thank Paul for his presentation, because he really con absolutely convinced me what we don't want. <laughs> and I think that the general feeling in the room, uh, hearing all the presentation, is that we do want a cultural center. In effect, we have six acres that we can indeed create an important museum that is going to represent the history of the city. We have a long and very rich history here. People like Jim Turrell, like Deben Korn, like Bob Irwin, all were on, on, on Main Street. Those people created amazing things that are now cons considered California art. Those people and their work and the people who are coming after, we need to create an archival museum. One acre and four stories would create, give us a 75,000 square foot museum, which will leave a great deal of open space. I think that the area right budding Pico Boulevard could take some kind of housing. It would be nice to have live workspace that connects with the whole cultural activity here and a mixed use opportunity on facing Pico, which will activate the community. Um, 
there are many things that are happening underground in this city, in, in this area, which are running streams. And I think that with a good architectural approach, we can really create an amazing place. And I agree with everyone who says we want the cultural center to be something of a unique nature and an important one for us and for the community at large. Thank you. Thank you. Anthony Schmidt, Peter Naughton, Louis Steiner. I um, appreciate table number seven. It's great to participate in a community that's working together to create a future that uh, is pioneering ways for us to all have well-being in our lives. Um, I realize there's a lot of wants and then there's a lot of I don't want that. Um, and one of the things that I find in having been a part of Main Street for 25 years is that, um, you know, it all has to be paid for. And um, the, the awesome part for me is that uh, the Civic is on Main Street and I'd love to have the Civic be a representation of community partnership for everybody to have a turn on the stage and demonstrate how essential it is to grow up in a community adjacent to Samo High where any business opportunity you want to participate in whether it be small, medium, or large has a sense of growth and development and encouragement um, uh, in all technology and the arts. So I just think that that's really important to look at and one person in our group actually suggested that we have seven six or seven towers, um, uh, which I think would be amazing as a backdrop for the six towers in front of the Civic, just as an opportunity to have low-income hotels for performing artists coming from all over the world, as this being a destination to pioneer expression in working together in community. Thank you. Peter Naughton, Louise Steiner, Jerry Rubin. I have not received any answer as to why this workshop is not fol following any published protocol of a visioning process workshop, but instead is a charade outreach meeting. I also have not received any answer to my question about the legal issue of this land being taken for civic center purposes by eminent domain, but now being told it has to pay for itself with commercial enterprises on the land. I decided if the bureaucracy cannot answer questions posed three weeks in advance, it is unlikely any questions will be answered on the spot here today. I told them I would see them in court, where the rules are written in, in advance, not decided on by how to look like you are asking the public when you've outlined all the choices in advance and given unlawful parameters anyway. I decided to go here today when there is actually a spot in the schedule for public input. Then when I linked to the link above, the, li the schedule was 8.30 begins and 1.30 adjourns. Now I have to keep looking to see where the public input time is. Fortunately, Anne Maggio Tanambala had posted the schedule on the Residocracy Facebook page, so I came here for my three minutes. Paul Silburn was paid over $400,000 to be a consultant to this group. Why are the rest of us supposed to come here for a free breakfast? <laughs> hr and does not represent what residents want. Also, Mr. Silverin's biases are known in advance as those of all the consultants City of Santa Monica staff hire. Redevelopment of Hollywood Park into a major mixed-use development with 3,000 housing units, regional retail and office and public uses are an example. And how about another one? 10 million square feet around Union Station. No agenda for this meeting was ever published. Thank you. Thank you. Louise Steiner, yes. Jerry Rubin, and Larry Skoos. Yes, hello there. Um, I am a resident of Santa Monica, and I've been a neighbor to the Civic Auditorium for over 30 years, and have attended many um, functions here. Uh, I would like to elaborate on the idea of um, having this become a museum. Uh, when I heard that the, the Civic was threatened, my brain went into gear as to uh, ways to save it. Uh, first, I contacted the architectural firm that uh, 
the architect, uh, belong, he's now passed on, um, belonged to, and they were shocked that there was even a question that uh, the Civic Center might go because it's such an architectural um, wonder. <laughs> so uh, then my second call went to um, the uh, person who founded the Lazarium that was up at Griffith Center for many years. It was very profitable. Uh, I spoke to the person himself who puts it on. Uh, it's now since moved to San Francisco. It's doing very well. He would love to have the Civic Center become a Lazarium. Um, he is also from here and uh, loves this Civic Center. So that's one option. And the last, I think, and the most viable, I called the museum, um, the Grammy Museum that's located at the Nokia Center and spoke to the people there. And they were very, very supportive of having a Grammy Museum West. Um, it would be profitable as the one downtown is. Uh, this center, uh, the auditorium has everything that the Grammy Museum has. It's got a performing area. Uh, tourists would love it because tourists love all things from the entertainment business. The Grammy Museum West has rotating um, uh, displays, uh, costumes from the performers, and the amount of performers that have passed through these halls is so numerous. I, I recommend anyone Googling um, the, the artists that have performed here. Um, also, uh, that pretty much um, covers it. I, I really think that's uh, uh, something to look into because they, they, they like the idea. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jerry Rubin, Larry Scoos, Jerry Rosenblum. Blum. First, I just want to thank everyone for being here, the working group, the Landmarks Commission for landmarking this appropriately over a decade ago. I want to thank the great architect, may he rest in peace, Welton Beckett. I had the honor of meeting his family. I know a lot of you did. This is a tremendously designed facility. It's a gem that just needs to get back to the place we were all at when the redevelopment funding was pulled. And there was a plan in place. There was design in place. There was a great program manager, Niederlander, that knows how to do stuff. They do the Greek theater here. They were going to keep the symphony here. Stairway to the stars, respect all the community stuff. It would have been very diverse. But now we have a bump in the road and a challenge. And maybe even better things can happen. But let's respect this wonderful, I don't even want to call it a facility, just a wonderful gift that's here in this city that people, residents and people all over the world will appreciate. We have a great Civic Center plan developing, Tongva Park, everything. We can do so much with this terrible surface parking that's low scale, that serves the needs of artists and people that are really into cultural activities and open space. We can make the money work. We can think of ways through public-private partnerships. I'm not against naming rights. I can think of so many things, bond measures, to get the money to do it. But let's make this auditorium the complete wonderful focus that it has been and will continue to be. I remember seeing the Dalai Lama here. I remember hearing wonderful educational speakers. I remember going to environmental conventions here. The Alt Build Expo, everything. Things could happen here and in the space outside. I remember seeing Bob Dylan on the front row, Willie Nelson, the Eagles, the Bee Gees. I can remember so many concerts here. Bob Marley was here, the Rolling Stones. I want to thank Carol and the whole crew that helped put together the programming here before this unfortunately had to shut. 
All you have to do is still get one of those booklets they published to show all the wonderful events they had here. So let's get it back. I can, I hope it happens in my lifetime. I just want to say we live right around the corner, corner and this is a wonderful, 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 wonderful meeting and let's just keep the energy going. Let's not be divided. Let's get it done. Uh, Larry Scoos, Jerry Rosenblum, Delyn Waldron. Uh, you should give it to staff so they can do what they have to do. What an act to follow. I second everything Jerry Rubin says. My name's Larry Skews. I have a couple, I have a, a magazine and also a production company, film production company here. And I feel that I want to thank again everybody. This is excellent for doing this, for the feedback. And I think this should be a role model for other groups in this city and elsewhere to show what can be done as far as getting good feedback to have good, pro good projects coming. Now, I don't know if any of you were aware of what's going on in Europe right now, but this thing called Tomorrowland, it was just a thing at the uh, Bergamont, which is kind of like a glorified rave. Uh, I think that we should have events here where we use both the outside and the inside. The outside to be used, of course, is performance, but also with art openings. But, but the concept is, the, the big thing in Europe and Tomorrowland is interactive. Let people come and let them come and do the art right there on site, inside and outside. And I think that would be a good idea to, for some gener uh, income generation, et cetera, et cetera. And um, anyway, that's what I, that's it. That's bottom line. Thank you. Jerry Rosenblum, Delyn Waldron, and Guido Lamel. Aren't you glad you came? <laughs> <laughs> I know I am. When I walked in this morning, I pictured this place as a movie complex, see? But I'm so glad to hear that there's a big demand here for a performing arts center, which is badly needed here, see? And that's what I would love to see here, a performing arts center, see? I visualize uh, a restaurant on the second floor, an upscale restaurant with an escalator going up and down, and uh, <coughs> the parking situation is just perfect for it, see? No problem. And if you go to New York City, see, you can pick up a New York Times and on any day they're showing 12 or 15 musicals, see. People love musicals, see. And we've got surrounded by hotels here, so many people coming here. They're advertising Santa Monica in Melbourne, Australia. I got, I got a letter from somebody from Melbourne, Australia, and he should sent me a two-page cutout the, of the travel section of a Melbourne paper. You can walk down the Third Street Promenade and hear Italian spoken, Spanish spoken, Japanese spoken, Chinese spoken. They're coming from all over the world, and they're coming here to have a good time, see? And why not a, a, a show them a good a Broadway show revival, see? So that's what I picture for the, for the Santa Monica Civic Auditorium. Thank you. Delyn Waldron, Guido Lamel, and Mike Salazar. Uh, right now, we desperately need a walkway over 4th Street from this parking lot to access Barnum Hall, the Samo High Campus, and the Olympic Auditorium. That doesn't have to wait for all this other development decisions. It is desperately needed. Uh, secondly, Having been involved in over a decade of many productions in the Civic Auditorium, I, in my humble opinion, it could be reopened now on an interim basis. There's absolutely no reason. Ben keeps it in perfect working condition, and we do need a venue this size. And third, just an idea, how about a lottery to pay for this? <laughs> Thank you. Guido Lamel, Mike Salazar, and Sioban Chenz. Hi, I'm Guido Lamel. I'm the conductor of the Santa Monica Symphony. So this 
is, has been the Santa Monica City's home for a long time, and I hope it will become the Santa Monica City's home once again, with a slight caveat. This was built as a hybrid, and I'm also, I'm also a member of the Los Angeles Philharmonic. Uh, the Los Angeles Philharmonic performed uh, in the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. Uh, I myself have been with the Philharmonic for 35 years. So I played in the Chandler Pavilion for 20, I think 23 years before Disney Hall was opened up. The difference was night and day. Chandler Pavilion was built as a hybrid. It serves everything. It serves Broadway. It serves various theatrical productions. It serves all kinds of stuff. It's also a concert hall. It's a lousy concert hall. Civic Center, I won't say it's a lousy concert hall, but it does not compare to a great, dedicated concert hall. The, the, the expression, you build it, they will come. Uh, I've always been amazed. The LA Philharmonic on tour plays in... Ames, Iowa, Sarasota, Florida, little places that have built great auditoriums. If you build a great auditorium here, the Berlin Philharmonic will play here, Chicago Symphony will play here, the LA Philharmonic will play here, and the Santa Monica uh, community deserves that. My bottom line is don't put anything here that you can put someplace else. I was shocked today. I had never heard about the educational center. I love educational centers. I have two beautiful daughters. I love education. But it doesn't have to go in the civic center. Think of Lincoln Center. Think of our own civic center downtown. Is there an educational center there? No, those are arts celebration locations, right? Lincoln Center, there's Avery Fisher Hall. There's the opera. There's the, the, the ballet, right? Next point, the idea of a soccer field. I love soccer. I love open green spaces. But a soccer field specifically, I think, is a bad idea. You can build a concert hall. We can, and it's aid. I don't want, to get, don't want to be taken wrong. This is a wonderful building. I believe it should continue to serve things that can be amplified. So Broadway productions, as he was suggesting, trade shows, all that I think is great. It's perfect for that, but it's not perfect for a concert hall. Let's build a great concert hall. Incidentally, yes, there are rich guys out there who will put their name on, on a concert hall. They won't put their name on a remodel. I'm sorry, that just doesn't work. Walt Disney, Amundsen, names like that, Avery Fisher Concert Hall, there's a name on every one of those buildings, we'll find that name. Thank you very much. Mike, no clapping, please. Mike Salazar, Sia Bon Chenz, and Bill Davids. Uh, Mike Salazar, I just live down the street a few blocks. Um, I was a little concerned about the uh, selection of examples that we saw today. And I think one of the things uh, that seemed apparent is that they were they were incomplete as to certainly as to the range of ideas we've heard today, um, and the adaptive reuse examples that we saw, um, I think to be fair were certainly not applicable, um, and subjectively they clearly did not apply to this site. Um, we don't have a Texaco building that we can uh, augment. Uh, a, a, a working auditorium, um, and we have a building that has very few windows at all, and what we saw were examples of, of uses that, that require window space, and that would completely alter and likely delist the building from its historic significance. Um, we need to see examples of civic centers. We keep hearing about the the this building, and I've been one that's from the beginning that's promoted this building as the crown jewel of our civic center, but we need to look at civic centers. So we need to see examples of that, how other cities treat civic centers. Um, that's an important uh, aspect that we didn't see today. Uh, the other issue, and this continually came up at our table, where it was is the issue of financing. and. We know we're going to get to that in January, but everybody kept coming back to that issue. Well, what about this? What about that? Um, the reason this is important is because with HRNA now signed on as the full consultant, um, we heard this week about the airport study that they did in 2012. 
And the fact that the airport isn't the economic powerhouse that we've been told it is, it's actually more equivalent to a medium-sized strip mall. Um, the question is, how can we be sure that that is not going to happen with the ec economic evaluation that we have coming up with this? You've heard today that most people don't want a hotel. Practically everybody doesn't want office space. We know that those generate money and in some cases would be viable, but we want to see econ economic uh, options that reflect what we've heard today and what we know the community wants to have in this project. So that's sort of a tall order, but we're sure that with the working group um, that that can happen. It's just something we have to be vigilant about, and that's coming up. And I look forward to that. Um, as I said, this is a jewel, and it's something that most cities don't have. Uh, which is why it's a historic resource. And um, I, again, I thank the working group for the work to date. I look forward to uh, HRNA coming up with viable examples and really getting into the economics as we come up. Thank you. See you behind Shens. Okay. Bill Davids. Roger Genzer. Okay. Uh, first of all, I agree with Guido. If I was in the Detroit Symphony, I would die to come play in Santa Monica in January. So I think that would be very appealing to a lot of cultural uh, groups internationally. Um, I would really like to see the Civic Center be a civic center, but expanded so that it serves many different needs of the community. I think one of the considerations should be something I didn't think of when we were having our table discussions, but a wellness center. And I know a lot of communities have wellness centers. We have an aging population. We have a diverse um, population economically. And not everybody can afford to have a gym membership at LA Fitness. And places like this can include public pools, like the very successful project at SMC where there are two pools, but that's not enough to serve the whole community. Those pools are in high demand. Um, it would be something that the high school could be tied into. They could be using the pool um, after school weekends for meets, but that leaves all day long for residents to come and use facilities like that. It's all about health in this community, and we need to come up with ways to make that something everyone can reach out and attain. Um, I sort of see it, in other words, as a public um, athletic complex to complement whatever arts or cultural center stays here in the Civic Auditorium itself. Um, there's also Toyota. Uh, Toyota has sponsored and pays for a fabulous three-field soccer complex down in Torrance. I'm not talking about the huge place where the galaxy plays. So there is funding out there for, for mixed use um, projects. They have local soccer tournaments, but all sorts of other athletic events are held there. It's a community-based idea. We have Friday night football games in Santa Monica that don't even take place at the high school. And I think it would help bring this community together if we really had that sort of a Friday night football opportunity as part of the uh, community. I just wanted to reemphasize one thing, and that is that this should be a community-driven process. Um, I've met a lot of people here today and heard a lot of people here today who I think consider themselves stakeholders, but I really want to emphasize that the stakeholders who should be considered most are the people who actually live in Santa Monica. And so I'd like to ask if everyone would raise your hand who actually lives in Santa Monica, please. Thank you. Okay. And there, you know, these are the faces I see at a lot of events. So hang in there. <laughs> Thank you. Bill Davids, Roger Genzer. My recommendation is to return it as a popular entertainment venue. We happen to be in a regional hub. Tourists come here. We have our own resident population. And we have people coming into Santa Monica from adjoining communities. And 
My concern is that we turn the auditorium back into something so specialized that people will not use it as they ought to be using it. Uh, insofar as financing is concerned, and I know today's meeting is really about financing, I have been telling anyone who would listen, uh, we have uh, the top industry people living in Santa Monica. We have major motion picture companies here. We have major music companies here. We have major TV production companies here, and we also have those people who are operating the companies living right here in Santa Monica, and we are not taking advantage of it. Uh, insofar as at least partial financing is concerned, one of my recommendations is to affiliate with one of the major talent agencies in town, like CAA or William Morris Endeavor. Uh, they have excellent sponsorship slash branding departments, which could be very helpful uh, in redeveloping the Civic Auditorium. And they could put you in touch with clients and producers who could provide the uh, auditorium with events. Also, both of those agencies, William Morris Endeavor and CAA, are backed by very large private equity investment groups, which might come to the rescue of the Civic Auditorium. Uh, I have not seen outreach to the entertainment community so far, or at least I'm not aware of it. And my strongest recommendation is to play the showbiz card to get the Civic Auditorium operating again. Thank you. Roger Genzer, David William Martin, Gloria Garvin. Howdy. My name is Roger Genzer, and I'm a 37-year-long resident of Ocean Park, just down the street. And I apologize. I arrived late because, uh, and I did not have the benefit of seeing all the workshops and the information and the uh, uh, stuff that was shown this morning. Uh, my reason for that is those who know me, I'm obsessed with uh, acquiring Santa Monica historical material, and there was a postcard and a photography show in uh, Glendale, so I did acquire some Santa Monica historical material. Uh, to that end, I also uh, uh, want to say, in my experience in the city, I'm a member of the Landmarks Commission, and I'm proud to have voted to landmark this building, and so I'm very committed to uh, having its... Uh, longevity maintained, which is, doesn't seem to be a question. The question is the use. And uh, I might add that I was also on a civic center task force about 1990 or so. Uh, so there's been many incarnations of these groups, uh, always looking toward the future, which I also do look toward. Uh, one of the things I, I, when I walked in, the first thing I heard was, well, we're all against having trade shows. Well, I just wanted to respond to that in that uh, that was one work. That was one group, not the whole group of, of you. Uh, and I just wanted to respond to that by saying that I do think this should be a multi-use facility. I think if it's a multi-use facility, then it can be an ongoing its use. If it's not a concert, if it's not an art show, it can be other uses. And there's a very uh, uh, small number of available facilities on the west side that are of moderate scale. We have Barker Hangar. Uh, Culver City is now in a big. Uh, cultural renewal, and there's an area around there which was abandoned warehouses, and they now have a wonderful exhibition space. But we don't have that facility, and this this building was built with that in mind as being multi-use. So I, I do want to reiterate that I, I think you shouldn't close doors uh, to be able to use this building to its, ult its ultimate uh, ends. But arts and cultural is you know something that is a very viable, uh, has been historically, and is certainly it's something that we should look at. Uh, it's that moderate size space that this will be. And I, I want to emphasize moderate size because I also do support the open space that people have talked about out there. Uh, how it's used, I don't know. I didn't, again, I didn't hear all the workshops and, and the proposals. But I think that uh, hotels and, and convention centers of that nature uh, uh, should be uh, not necessarily looked at favorably. Thank you. Paul will, I mean, David William Martin, Gloria Garvin, Lori Weitzel. Hi. Um, so many intelligent things have been said. I have also, I don't know if they're intelligent, but I have many, many things to say. But um, I'm just going to limit myself to one kind of observation, or maybe two. Uh, my observation is that it's very, we have lots of street musicians in the commercial areas in downtown. They're a very important part of the um, vibe of the place. Um, 
I know it's actually very difficult to find um, places to practice indoors, and Santa Monica College doesn't open its practice rooms to people who aren't affiliated. I don't know why, but they don't. So one use I really think would be great for this facility when it's revived is um, ample rehearsal spaces, live rooms for musicians, including, especially including homeless musicians, because you have enormous talent out there on the street, and a lot of it is fallow. And you can't really practice a musical instrument and develop your craft in the open air. It just, it's performance if you're in the open air, even if there are very few people actually around. So I suggest strongly that part of the, I favor performance component. I actually think that I miss the craft shows and the cat shows and all the other shows, so I like the idea of having conference space too. But performance seems more important, and I, I, so I really want to strongly um, urge that indoor practice facilities of various sizes be part of the mix and be made available to the community on every scale, including transient homeless population. Gloria Garvin, Lori Weitzel, Hara Beck. Okay, first I want to thank uh, Nina and the rest of the group for all the work you've done. Um, my name is Gloria Garvin. I grew up in the Ocean Park area of Santa Monica. I now live in the Pico neighborhood and I'm on the PNA board. I'm speaking today as an individual. Uh, like a number of other people here, I have lifelong memories of the Civic. And um, I want to share just a couple of them with you. When, at, uh, when I was at John Adams, I played the violin here at Stairway to the Stars was really wonderful. Uh, I came to surfing movies here in high school. I watched the Academy Awards uh, from here. And I came to concerts, lots of concerts. Um, one night, I was here with a boyfriend who had long hair that was cut exactly like the lead singer of the group, the Monkees. And we were hanging around backstage and, and out by the door there when a group of uh, young women, groupies, decided that uh, he was one of the monkeys. <laughs> and they um, just uh, uh, practically attacked us. We had to run for our lives down Main Street. And uh, I'll never forget that. <laughs> and was quite glad we weren't really in that position all the time, like people who uh, were had to, had to fend for their lives. Um, at any rate, since then, uh, many concerts that were uh, more sedate, like uh, the Santa Monica Symphony, and other shows here. So um, I have a lot of heartfelt memories from here. Moving forward with the question of the Civic, um, I know that the question of funding will be addressed later, but uh, a number of us have been thinking about this. And my suggestion is, um, why not ask every developer who's looking for a DA in Santa Monica to be forced, requested, required to put in a percentage to funding the Civic. I think that would give the money we would need. Just that. So, thanks. Uh, Lori Weitzel and then Hara Beck. Thank you. I'm Lori Weitzel. I really enjoyed today and learned a lot. Uh, I have actually a request, and that is it has been mentioned or referenced that we had a plan before when we had redevelopment money and when that money went away, so did the plan. I would like to see what the great minds that put that plan together created. I'd love to see that because I think it's it on might... on the website. Well, then there you go. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. All right. Thank you. I will definitely check that out because I've been wanting to see that. And then the second thing that I would... I would like to say is that um, in this neighborhood as we respect and try to build partnerships with our neighbors, one of the greatest neighbors is Santa Monica High School. And it's a vibrant, tremendous place for culture and education. And uh, Every table mentioned something about Santa Monica High School, and I really want us all to keep that place in mind because we do have the beautiful Barnum Hall. We have the Greek amphitheater that 
that could be utilized more and perhaps refurbished. And as we develop this, it almost seems as if we could have a cultural corridor, not just right here, but expanding in that direction. So I want us to think really big about that and see how we can continue that conversation with one of our greatest neighbors. And uh, we close with Hara Beck. Hi, uh, shout out to Cousin Roger. I didn't realize you were there that long. Um, I've only been here 35 years. Um, I, um, when I was little, when I was a year old, my Nana bought a house on a, one of the uh, streets over here. And I used to play there as a child. And I would come over for weekends and whatever. We'd take the tram down to what's now the boardwalk and go to the Dome Theater and that kind of thing. Um, but uh, when I was 12, she died. And what I understood was while uh, I didn't come back until I was a new divorcee with an 18 month, two and a, year, two and a half year old daughter, um, that the whole place had been uh, redeveloped with what they called urban renewal. That's when I believe this was built and the whole six blocks south of Pico were taken for I guess the beach parking lot because my street's only half the size as it used to be. Um, the reason I'm saying this is because we don't think about um, who used to live here. And when I was here, I didn't even think about who used to live here, but please remember Tongva Park is, is named for the original people who lived here. And while, I was, while we were sitting at this table, there was a woman named Ola Mitchell. And she, she was talking about, she's African American, she's not here. And if you look around the room, you can see how diverse we are. Um, <laughs> no comment. Um, but um, she talked about people need to be recognized and talk about cultural um, talk about cultural history. Evidently, where we're sitting used to be a, uh, a, a vibrant African-American community. And she suggested, and I'm putting it out there, and I know Nathan has this in his notes already, but a museum dedicated to African-American history in Santa Monica, or part of another museum, because um, it's deserving. And I had no clue until she came to this table, sat down, and told us. So I'm putting it out there for everybody else, that, we, that African American people here in Santa Monica who have a very rich history, uh, Calvary Baptist Church goes back, I think, 95 years, and I take classes there. So um, it's deserving, and I think it should happen. Just as Tongva Park was named for the original people who lived here, we need to do something for the original people who lived right here on this land. Thank you. Thank you. So that concludes our open mic period of our meeting. Um, I have to say you guys are very thorough and have left no stone unturned. And uh, uh, now um, I just have to say this over and over again because it's, I think it's really important. Uh, a lot of our material and research background can be found on the city website, which is www.santamonicacivic.org. Um, there's also a www.savethecivic.org, which is a different website. And there's also an archive of city documents and informational items on there. And uh, almost anything that's ever happened here that you want to find out about, you can read on one of those two websites. Now you finally get to hear from the Civic Working Group. So uh, if anybody has any closing comments, I'm just going to go by this kind of alphabetical-ish. No, this isn't even alphabetical. I'm going to go down this list, whatever order it's in. And uh, hear fascinating and concise comments from my co-committee members. Uh, Linda Bozung, please. Hey, I just want to thank you all for being here. Mouth to mic. All right, mouth to mic. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, it was very illuminating for me, especially to hear how much you all want this to be community focused and the uh, activities on the site to be for the community as opposed to a larger Los Angeles or even larger than that area. And uh, just appreciate it. And I hope you'll come to the January 
uh, workshop where we're going to talk about the economics of how we make all these dreams come true. Thank you. Phil Orozco. You know, maybe you should tell a little about your background and why you're on the group. Just say what you do or what, uh, what you're, you know what I'm saying? Tell them what you bring to the party. Yes. And um, then I was, I'm now retired uh, and loving it. Um, I was a land use lawyer for many years. I did the Grove. I did uh, UCLA's Long Range Development Plan. I did the Citadel, Newhall Ranch. Uh, and uh, zoning, land use, environmental issues was my specialty. Thank you. Phil Orozco. Hi there. Um, I am an owner and investor in uh, um, several real estate assets, commercial real estate in Santa Monica, particularly focused on um, uh, encouraging local businesses versus large corporate chains to come back to the city and to start taking over some of the real estate that had been, I guess, commandeered um, over the years. And so that's that's generally uh, what I do. I think I was personally very inspired by, I was over there at Table 10 and from speaking to everyone um, about all the new, all the energy that is um, is coming towards us. You know, we had a very tough job of taking a very large uh, idea and to try and distill it over time here to a plan and a recommendation and it seems like after a meeting like this there is uh, some consensus forming or at least some ideas that are showing up as stronger than others and it's inspiring and energizing and so um, I look forward to, to keep going from here so thank you everyone thank you Jody Summers next please hi I'm Jody Summers Ocean Park resident um, member of the Ocean Park Association and broker associate with Sotheby's International Realty and it was really great to hear everybody's feedback today and to help us basically figure out what to do with this great location. There were some, there, as Philip said, there were some obviously, there were some, some clear cut things that are coming through of what the community wants, that we want something very community serving. And there were some great ideas that I, I know that as a group that we had not necessarily thought of. So your input was tremendously valuable. Thank you very much. Thank you. Carrie Upton, please. Uh, hello, Carrie Upton. Uh, I work in the theater and I manage the facility use for the Santa Monica Malibu Unified School District. Uh, just, I'm just really quite overwhelmed with all the different ideas that I've heard today. Uh, there's a lot of information, a lot of new ideas, and it's interesting to see and compare what I might have thought would have said with what actually got said. So I'm, and so thank you for giving us your morning. Uh, really appreciate, uh, especially those at my table and the ones I spoke to outside. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Yao Katagiri. Oh. Thank you, Nina. Um, I, I was asked to represent my colleagues on the Arts Commission, which is the primary reason I'm here, and I'm also a 25-year member of the Santa Monica Child Care and Early Education Task Force, and I have been sitting across the street for 39.5 years. My office has been across the street at RAND, so I've been here every day for those almost 40 years uh, and have looked at the Civic Auditorium for uh, pretty much every day for those 40 years. Um, thank you all for coming and contributing such a broad, rich cross-section of ideas. It's really been amazing. Uh, this morning and I know you gave up a lot of time to be here and hopefully you'll give it up again in January to come back uh, to that workshop. Clearly there is a strong sense of what we want to see in this facility, in this building um, and so that's good. There were a lot of different ideas um, for complementary uses uh, that would also be uh, acceptable uh, and and very provocative. And uh, what I heard was that it's all in the balance of those. It's not really all or nothing of any of those uses. It's really the secret is in the balance and, and the details uh, of what we decide to do. So what it means that for this working group is a lot of work, uh, a lot more work in uh, the coming months, and a lot of work for you as you continue to contribute to this process. So thanks a lot. Phil Brock, please. Well, I'm from this community, so I was 
born here. I saw my first Oscars on TV from the Civic. I went to first concerts in my life here at the Civic, saw surf movies here. Um, I'm the chair of the Recreation and Parks Commission. So I loved hearing from some of you that green space outside this facility would be a better alternative than asphalt that we have now. Um, I've spent decades in the media community. I'm the immediate past president of the Talent Managers Association. I own um, a company here in Santa Monica for the last 20 years that we deal with film, television, and the arts community. So this facility, this area has a civic center is extremely important to me. I heard today community uses with a focus on this has a hub of our community for arts, for culture. I heard that density would not be welcome. I heard that hotels would not be welcome. I heard that office space would not be welcome. I heard that we should integrate with Samo High performing art spaces, the Greek theater and Barnum Hall should be essential, that we should respect the civics history, respect the community that was here before the civic while bringing it into the 21st century. I heard interesting things, everything from a museum of beach culture to a legitimate art museum proposed. I really loved hearing these things. And I also loved hearing that we should respect not only our city, but our historic beach culture, that we needed to connect to Ocean Park, Main Street, our downtown, activate the perimeter so we can walk, enjoy, and really feel connected in our community, that this does not, this becomes an oasis for us, not a desert in this area, which it always has been. And I did hear that amenities for this area need to be for residents first, not tourists, that Pasadena is a great case study for Santa Monica to look at. We didn't see great examples of case studies today, but we'll work to get there. And I really want to encourage, you know, several members of our task force have said that January is a great time to come back. I disagree. I need you and our civic work needs you in October, November, December, January, February, and March. We need you here every month. We'll give you chips. We'll give you, uh, you know, we'll give you a Nature Valley uh, Oak and Honey Bar, but we really need your input. This is your civic auditorium. This is your civic center. Please make sure that you're involved now and you continue to be involved. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Frank Gruber. I feel uh, very privileged to be on this group. Closer. Um, as long as I've been involved in Santa Monica activities, it's been mostly, it seems, about the Civic Center. Uh, going back to the 1993 plan when there was a whole look at what to do with the Civic Auditorium then, and it's continued. Um, and I'm really glad that Hara brought up the issue of the Belmar Triangle neighborhood that lived here because uh, a few years ago, it's actually kind of coincidental, a few years ago I gave a couple public lectures on the history of the Belmar Triangle and how it got destroyed to build the Civic Auditorium. And just yesterday, Nina called me and said, I heard that you did this, uh, can you put it together in a form that could be uh, put on the web or something like that. So Nina volunteered to do it because I don't know how to do any of that stuff. So I'm getting here all the stuff. So if anybody wants to know about that history, uh, there will be something available about it. Um, I thank, want to thank you all for coming out today. It was really terrific. Um, the love that people have for this and the hope that they have for the future is really great. A um, Couple standout comments uh, that I heard uh, amongst a lot of great stuff in the group that I was in, table seven, there was a really, this was the one that called about the hub and the hub. The, the, and, and the hubs worked in a lot of different ways. One of the people, I mean, there was kind of an obvious hub going out to the, making the connections to the high school and down to downtown and into my neighborhood, Ocean Park. But there was also a hub of creating a cultural venue that was both usable by local artists 
and brought in the best of the arts from around the world. And, and I thought that was a really, uh, I'd never really heard it kind of expressed that way. And the people on the, it kind of came out of the discussion in, on, the, on the table. I thought that was really terrific. Another one I heard when I was out at uh, site number four, somebody came up and she was saying that, well, you know, I, that we got to get somebody, a philanthropist in here to come in and do it. And I think that that's, honestly, I think that we have to be thinking about how we can create a vision that would attract something like that. Because I, um, you know, we have three hotels around here right now. This is a, a very special space. We need to do something about Pico Boulevard. But clearly, we're going to need to get some free money. That's what I, how I look at it. And we need to be able to, I think, uh, create a kind of vision that comes out of here that will attract um, somebody or some organization to work with us to both build something and uh, program it. And that's just my instinct that goes for the future, but we'll see. Anyway, thanks a lot. Um, so I'm Nina Fresco. Um, uh, I have been a, la or I had been a Landmarks Commissioner for 12 years, which is uh, my very first meeting as a Landmarks Commissioner was when we landmarked the Civic Auditorium. I got to ride up and down on the orchestra pit. It was really cool. Um, so I have that connection and I have a lot of excitement about the idea that everybody in this community agrees on one thing and that is that this is an important iconic building and we're going to do something with it. So. That's really where I come from, and I'm just excited to hear any viable plan that we can attract free money or any kind of money for so that we can make that happen and turn the lights on and get it happening. So with that in mind, speaking of viability, our next meeting in January will be, as we keep saying, about the finances. Um, so you guys did a great job dreaming and in case you were all wondering, I know it's probably obvious, but I'm going to say it. The reason we break you up into these groups is so you can talk face to face and with strangers about different ideas and actually convince each other with things and enlighten each other to different points of view. And that changes your ideas. So if since you filled out your booklet, you have a new idea or heard something new, add to it, change it, go online and submit more things later. You know, really let the people around you influence what you're thinking so that we get a really broad, juicy uh, final product. And then, as Phil said, it would be really great if you guys came to our next few meetings. We're going to be getting information from our consultant who uh, we will, you know, I mean, I think they know what their charge is in terms of what the uses that people are liking are and how we're going to have to figure out how to pay for them. But uh, there may be other things that come up that we might want to know about. And it's at those meetings that those questions can be asked and that research can be done. So when we come in here in January, we have the information we need to make important decisions. So again, we'll be developing it further and things will be finally honed in March. So again, like Phil said, we want you to really try to be a part of it. And remember, if you can't show up, there's the website. There, tell all your friends, get them to fill out forms. We want as many different points of view as possible because I think we'll probably find out there's a strong common thread and it will be a really strong statement for the Civic Working Group to bring back to council in their final recommendations. Nina? Um, with thanks for everyone attending, I move that we adjourn this meeting. I, I have a few moments of oh, orders of business. One moment, I see you. I just, before everyone runs away, please, if you are done filling out your sheets, hand them to staff. Even if you're not, there's a box over there. They're all waving things at you. <laughs> I would feel best if you handed them in even if they're not done and then you just did more online so you don't actually forget and it doesn't end up in that pile of mail on your kitchen counter. Um, they will validate your parking. They will give you a fabulous tote bag that is recycled. And uh, we will see you all very soon.
I think there is one more we comment, which you can just say loudly. All of our meetings, thank you, are the fourth Monday of the month at 6.30 in this very room. Occasionally we meet at Ken Edwards Center, so really good idea to check santamonicacivic.org and make sure. Is it a Saturday morning one or is it a Monday night one? The, Jan the January meeting is a Saturday and a Sunday because there is so much to learn about yeah, finance. Okay. 31st. The 31st and the 1st. Okay, can I try again? Now you can make a motion. And again, with thanks for everyone who attended today, I move that the Civic Working Group adjourn. Do we All have a in second? favor. Second. Aye. Second. Aye. All in favor? Okay. Okay. Thank you.